hey guys, how's it going? Today is the day of the Astra launch. I'm so excited to go over there and check it out. Astra is a small company, but they have big ambitions. Let's take you guys with me. And it's almost like SpaceX launching small, small satellites or small stacks into uh, into space. And I'll tell you what, if Astra could pull this off with the satellites and payload that it has there uh, on the rocket today, then I might be starting to look into some Astra stocks and uh, see how they do. So this is going to be exciting. Come on with me. Let's check out this launch. Hey guys, welcome to Your Space TV. Here we are at another launch. This one is for Astra. Astra is going to be the competitor, uh, the rival, I guess, of SpaceX. Astra is a small rocket that's going to launch small payloads. And it's a beautiful day. It's been scrubbed already three different times. Um, the last scrub actually ignited and a sensor went bad. Four, three, one, zero, abort. Abort. Whee! <laughs> what the hell just happened? They pretty much had to abort the launch. So today we're here at the beach. Now this one's gonna be launching from pad 46, which is right on the corner. Oh, yep, there it is. Now it's a small rocket, as you can see. The lightning rods, and normally the Falcon 9, is uh, just under those lightning rods that you see. But this one here, it's way, way smaller. Astra's a, a new company that started only about four years ago. It's the first privately funded um, commercial rocket company. About the only one on the beach with long pants on try to film a little bit around here just kind of give you a perspective it's low tide right now as you can see so the water reaches right up to the hill there when it's high tide it's a great shot though oh man check out the moon it's like a spot in here. the moon during the day how beautiful that looks I'm guessing it's going to be pretty windy here, so hopefully it won't annoy you guys too much. The cool thing is that Astra is the first commercial company that has built these rockets in such little time. They only started in 2018, and here we are in 2022. Now, they're, most of their rockets, they launch them from Alaska, uh, and they started building their, their rockets over in um, Alameda in the naval base of uh, California, San Francisco, pretty much. And pretty cool company. The, the military pretty much gave them the part of the naval base for them to start. Um, the CEO is pretty much like a like an Elon Musk. Uh, the good thing about this, uh, this company, it actually started trying to um, compete uh, with like five or six other companies to try to launch small satellites to go into low earth orbit. They got up to like three companies were about ready to, to uh, win the grant. I think the grant was about $15 million that they won. And the other companies were having so much issues with their rockets that they decided on dropping out. The only one left was Astra. Unfortunately, they had a certain deadline to beat and they never beat the deadline. So they lost the $15 million, but they got they pretty much won first place. So the government took a side of that, and NASA took a side of that. They decided on going with Astra. The other cool thing is that Astra, since it's a small rocket, the whole rocket fits inside the shipping container. So don't, they don't necessarily need a pad, per se, like a, like a Falcon 9 does, for it to launch. The launch pad can actually be brought out behind a semi-truck, and it can be launched from pretty much anywhere, which is cool. The important part of that is 
that if all of a sudden there's an issue with space satellites, uh, safety, a satellite blows up, let's just say for worst case scenario, there's a, a battle in space that somebody shoots down some of our satellites, it will take months for Falcon 9s to be able to get ready to launch a satellite. This satellite here, you can put it anywhere, and as long as it's a small satellite, remember, it's gotta be extremely small. Only a couple of Starlink satellites would fit in, the, in an Astra rocket. Everything is moving to being smaller satellites now. So as long as they're gonna be smaller satellites, then we can launch it from anywhere around the world and get back to get back to business. First launch ever from the East Coast. So NASA's taking a chance. They've tried to reach space four different times and two of those times it's failed. So they've only reached orbit twice. One of them was a failure, the other one was uh, <laughs> an odd failure. Right when it lifted off, one of the boosters didn't ignite the way it was supposed to and it actually tilted sideways. So instead of watching the rocket, three, two, one, up you go, it was three, two, one. Three, two, one, ignition, zero. First motion. First motion. And then it started going up, which is, that's not the way a rocket is supposed to look like. And you can see straight ahead, if I can get it, is the lighthouse. Check that out. Look how beautiful that is. That's the lighthouse to Canaveral, Merritt Island Lighthouse. I'm going to go ahead and focus on the launch. I believe there's probably going to be three minutes left or five minutes left. I want you guys to have a full ignition launch. Stop talking here. <laughs> okay. It's a bit cool. This is exciting. Astra. Go Astra. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. LV-0008 has launched and is on its way to space. bearing separation and stage separation and you can see that the upper stage ether, ether engine running. has lit. And it looks like we've lost video of the upper stage and standing by for more information. Shit. And thank you for standing by with us. Um, unfortunately, we heard that an issue has been experienced during flight that prevented the delivery of our customer payloads to orbit today. We are deeply sorry to our customers, NASA, the University of Alabama, um, the University of New Mexico, and the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, more information will be provided as we complete a data review. And you can follow along for updates on uh, Twitter at Astra, as well as on our website, astra.com. All right, guys, maybe I'm not going to be investing in stock in Astra. Man, I was so excited. I was like, well, 
it doesn't blow up and it actually ends up taking off, this is gonna be great. It didn't work very well for Astra. Man, it took off perfectly. Everything was great until it reached LEO, low Earth orbit. And what it looked like to me, at least with the footage that I saw on the drive back, is that it seems like the second stage, before it lit, it kind of pushed forward. I don't know if you could see that, and I'll probably put it in my video. The timing of the stages is so important. If the, if the flarings do not open at the exact time that they're supposed to open, and the second stage doesn't fire up at the exact time that it's supposed to fire up, this is what happens. From what I observed, um, it looks like one of the flarings either got stuck, th those work off of actuators. So if an actuator got stuck and it didn't open up the flarings, then by it being stuck, that second stage is ready to fire no matter what. The second stage does not know that the flaring is completely open or closed or stuck. As soon as the second stage ignited, I believe there was probably some gas, this is my opinion, some gas inside of the chamber itself. So it pretty much just launched that thing like a cork from a champagne bottle. And, um, and unfortunately it started pitching end over end and the, the payload was lost. And, uh, unfortunately, it crashed into the Atlantic Ocean and until the investigation is done by Astra and NASA, I don't believe we'll see another Astra mission anytime soon. Um, but that's unfortunate, but still a successful launch. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're batting 50 out of 50 here. You know, so it's not a bad reputation to have. And go Astra, fix your problem, and let's do it again. Thank you guys for watching my video. On to the next one. Thanks. Have a good day.